Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Reed Ministry, uh, this is me, Justin Reed, and I have a very, very awesome, very um, cool, important message for you guys, um, so let's get right into it, uh, before though, I do want to pray, so um, Lord, I thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, I ask that you open our hearts, you open our minds, to, to, to see and hear and feel the things that you desire and that you intended for us to feel in this video and throughout the day, Lord. Allow us to have the minds to comprehend, allow us to have the hearts to receive, and allow us to have the ears to listen and take in, Lord. Open our eye gates and open our ear gates, Lord, to receive your word, Lord. Allow all that comes out of my mouth, Lord, to be fueled and guided by the Holy Spirit, nothing more and nothing less. And allow the people watching, Lord, to receive what is needed to be received, Lord. In your mighty son, Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. So let's get into it. Um, a couple of days ago, I did have an opportunity to talk with Jesus. I had an encounter with him. And um, before I get into it, I do want to say having an encounter with Jesus is not exclusive to certain Christians and certain believers. It's not exclusive to those that may have certain gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It's available to everybody. It just, you have to get closer with God. You got to seek his face consistently. But the more that you seek his face and the Lord, the more that you know about who he is and who he's called you to be, the more intimate you'll, you'll get with him. But it's not exclusive. Anybody can have an encounter with Jesus. Anybody can have an encounter with our Heavenly Father. But nevertheless, I did have an encounter with Jesus. I was able to sit down and talk with him. Um, I won't say where because uh, some, some things when, certain things when you talk with uh, Jesus or you have these intimate encounters with our Lord some things are meant to have to yourself to keep to yourself that goes for me that goes for any encounters you may have as well because it's supposed to be an element of intimacy that's always there between you two now there are some things like the message today that of course they're like yeah yeah you know share it this is what needs to be said and the other things are meant to keep just between you and the Lord or you and Jesus so it's, it's important to have discernment on whether or not this is something that needs to be shared or something that just needs to be kept eternally so I was sitting with Jesus and um, of course I asked the question I believe many of us have you know and I asked him I just stood straight up I said Jesus I said what is the purpose of life and I'm not going to misquote his words but I'm a, I wrote it down obviously when I came back too so I will share it as well. This is what Jesus said to me. I said, Jesus, what is the purpose of life? Jesus responded and he said, the purpose of life is to give, to love, but most importantly, to give. Now, I t of course I'm going to take it as it's, it's Jesus, so of course I'm going to take it as the gospel, but it did kind of throw me for a loop momentarily because you would think that out of giving and loving, that love would be more important than giving. But upon further, you know, you know, just kind of sitting down thinking about it, it does make a lot of sense because in order to love, a lot of the aspects of loving somebody or loving something is the ability and the desire to give, right? When you love somebody, you give. So I, it makes a lot of sense. But I wanted to break down, break down this purpose of life a little further, right? But what I wanted to do was, the first thing I wanted to understand is, okay, well, how many times is the word give mentioned in the Bible? How many times is the word love mentioned in the Bible, right? So I, it's okay, I got the receipts. I got it for you guys, right? So before we get to that, I want to give the definition of give and love. Give, or dino in Greek, is to present voluntarily without expecting compensation or to bestow. Right? So basically, to give means to give to somebody. I know I use give and giving the same thing. But it means to present something to somebody without the expectation of receiving something back. Or to bestow upon somebody as well. So we have the Greek definition. And the reason I'm having the Greek definitions for give and love is because the books of the New Testament are universally agreed to have been written in Greek. Why? Greek was the language of scholars during the creation of the New Testament. And this is from 50 to 180. Right? So give or dino in Greek is to present voluntarily without expecting compensation or to bestow. Right? 
love or agape in Greek is the covenant love of God for humans as well as the reciprocal love humans have for God in relation to the New Testament, right? So this kind of love is different from the love that we express, a lot of us express today because this love is from the standard of how God loves us, not how we love each other, right? And there's a major difference between the love God gives to us and the love we give to others. And the difference is God's love towards us is unconditional. That is a major difference, but it does make all the difference as well. And the reason I want to go into the Greek definitions of give and love is because a lot of the time when we translate Greek or other languages into English, a lot of the time, I'm not going to say we dumb it down, but we do simplify it when certain words or phrases or sentences, especially according to the Bible, do not need to be simplified, right? So that's why I wanted the Greek definitions or the original definitions of give and love according to the Bible, specifically the New Testament. Now we have these definitions of love and give. We have to figure out well, how many times was love and give mentioned in the Bible, right? The word love in all tenses, past, present, and future, is mentioned 714 times in the Bible. 714, right? But the next fact will shock you. The word give in all tenses is mentioned an astonishing 2,172 times in the Bible, right? So judging from that right there, we see the significance of love and we see the even more significance of the word give in the Bible, right? It, so far it aligns with Jesus and the purpose of life is to give and to love, but most importantly, to give, right? So what I want to do is I have three scriptures involving giving and loving that I want to kind of dissect and get into and see how it applies to our lives today, right? The first one is in Hebrews 13, verse 16, right? You can pause the video, give you guys some time to get there. Um, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. All right. So Hebrews 13, 16, and don't forget to do good and share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. Right? To do good is kind of a broad statement. Because there are so many things we can do good in. Whether it's in our lives, whether it's in other people's lives. Right? That may be taking your siblings out to the movies. That may be taking out the trash for your grandparents. That may be anything that pleases God, whether it's in your life or in somebody else's life is deemed good, right? We always want to appear and do good in the eyes of God, right? But the next thing is to share with those in need. That's where giving comes into play, right? And a lot of people, when you see sharing in need, it, it automatically goes to financial sense, but that's not always the case, right? You can give your time, you can give your effort, you can give your opinions, you can lend your strength, you can give your strength in situations. Any more ways to give than just a financial sense, right? And that's what makes the term or the definition of giving so broad and so concrete because there's so many different ways to give, right? Even in the end, Jesus loved us so much and God loved us so much that he gave his only son to die on the cross for our sins, right? That was giving on both ends. That was giving from God to give the world his son, Jesus Christ. And that was Jesus giving his life to atone for all the sins we made, we're making, and we will make in all of our lives, right? That automatically shows the importance of giving in the eyes of God and how important it is to him, right? Go to the second scripture, right? This is John 15, verse 12. Again, in the New Living Translation, we'll give you guys some time to get there as well. All right. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Right? This is God. There is so much significance in that one statement, that one commandment. 
to love each other not the way we choose to love each other but love each other the way that God loves us I want to give you guys a moment to think about all the times God has been good to you I want to give you guys a moment to think of all the times God has expressed his love to you right now I want to follow that up with another question. Do you think in this moment you are able to love others the way that God loves you? My opinion to the exact T, no, because we're not perfect, but my goal and your goal as well should be to get as close as possible to this unconditional love that God has for us and share this same type of unconditional love with others because this is the, what God has commanded us to do. Right. That's why love is the second part, the other piece of our purpose in life. But it's not. the last scripture I want to give you guys is in Matthews five, verse forty two through forty three. New Living Translation. I want to give you guys some time to get there. All right. A little context. This is Jesus's sermon on the mountain. Right. So he preaching. All right. <laughs> Matthew five, verse forty two to forty three. This is Jesus saying, give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor, right? I'm going to stop it right now. <laughs> because we have to understand the context of Jesus when he says, hate your enemy, right? Who's the enemy? The enemy is obviously not man. The enemy is demonic spirits, principalities, dark powers, demons right that's our enemy because we wrestle not with the flesh right that's what he said so I, I, I looked at it first and I went ah but you know obviously I have that insight in that as well two things we want to notice is that as he's preaching the two words that pop up is to give and love right guys it's so important to incorporate giving and loving into our everyday lives there's so many people out here in this world that are desperately looking for those two things. There's people out here that have gone through so much in life through their childhood that needs love. I tell people all the time, there are some folks out here that may never walk into a church building a day in their lives, but they will encounter you, right? And you as a Christian, you as a child of God, they look to you to see what kind of God are they serving, right? So it's important. We have a responsibility as children of God to follow the example of Jesus and to represent God and God's heart the right way. God's heart is love and God's heart is a giving one as well. Therefore, we should seek to do the same thing or be the same way, to be like Jesus, right? The purpose of life is to give, to love, but most importantly, to give. When you love somebody, you give a lot to them. You give a lot for them. You give them your time. You give them your energy. You give them things financially. You, that's what love consists of. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. I'm going to say that again because I feel like that was deep. I feel like that was deep. <laughs> yeah. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Another way to put it, you cannot love without sacrificing, right? Let me explain even further. I could give somebody $5. I could give somebody that may be homeless. I could give them a $10 bill. But what is my intentions behind it? Is it because I generally want to give to this person and because I love this person? Or do I want to do it to impress my friends and have them think, oh, he's so, oh my gosh, he cares, da 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 for the satisfaction of the people around me. That's what I mean when I say you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving, right? If you love somebody, if I love my neighbor, if I love my wife, if I love my family, my children, we're going to give in some form or manner, right? Even if it's just giving your attention, giving your ears to listen to them, giving your eyes to see what they see, giving your heart to be able to be open to the things they want to tell you, giving up what you know for the possibility that, hey, this person that I love may be right and I may be wrong. You cannot love without giving. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. 
I think that's the basis of what Jesus meant when he described to me the purpose of life. To give and to love, but most importantly, to give. This is why we're here. This is why we fellowship with one another. This is why God gives us certain gifts or he gives us certain callings or he puts us in certain positions. The gifts and the talents that he gives us is not ours, guys. It's a loan. He loans us these gifts. He loans us these talents to expand the kingdom, right? For instance, I'm a musician. I don't just make music for myself. I give music so to people for people to enjoy. I make gospel music so that people can get closer to the kingdom. I'm giving my talents. I'm giving the gift that he gave me, right? Pastors, when they preach in the pulpit, they know the word. It could be very easy for them just to sit there with all the information they have in the Bible and just know I'm good, I'm straight. But that's not why God put them in that position. They give their time, they give their efforts to teach and preach the word to the congregation so that they in turn can get closer to God and expand the kingdom. Everything God gives us should not be for our own benefit. It's also to give as well. If God gives you a financial increase, that's an opportunity for you to give even more, to be a bigger blessing in people's lives, right? We have to understand that the basis of why we're here on earth, the basis of why God gives us gifts and talents and puts us in positions is to give and to love. God's calling up his children. I love you guys so much and I'm willing to give anything I need to give to make sure that you guys are on the right path with God and that you guys learn more every time you watch a video. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching. If you got anything today, you know, let it know in the comments. You know, if, if you receive something today, I would love to hear about it. If you have any questions, um, we would love to, to answer them. You know, that's what we're here for. So I love you guys and until next time. Guys, real quick, I want to give a definition of God's love. Um, and you can actually, you can look no further than uh, the book of John when he gave his son Jesus on the cross to die for us, right? There's so many different aspects of God's love to see there, right? First thing, obviously, is sacrifice. One aspect of God's love is sacrifice in a sense where, you know, he sacrificed his son to atone for our sins so that we can have a home in heaven with him. Sacrifice. There has to be forgiveness as a factor as well, because when Jesus died on the cross, all sins were forgiven in the eyes of God. Another aspect of God's love is compassion. If you look to the story of Noah and the ark, when God flooded the earth, he made a covenant with Noah. He made a covenant. A covenant is a promise. It's a legal agreement in the spiritual realm. And this is what he made with Noah to never again flood the earth because he had such compassion for his creation. It hurt him dearly to flood the earth the way that he did so much that him and Noah made a covenant never to let it happen again. Compassion. Compassion. Another thing that sits on my heart is the interaction Jesus had with the thief aside of him on the cross. He had, he had mercy for the thief that asked Jesus to come up with him when they passed. There was mercy. That was a factor in God's love there. Even when the people that crucified Jesus were merciless, were merciless to listeness. Okay. All right. We're incorporating all of these different factors. I'll incorporate this into the love that you have for other people, right? So that's what I mean when I say God's love is the love that we ought to exhibit towards everybody else around us. It's God's love is unconditional. Our love oftentimes is conditional. Our love is one dimensional while God's love is multidimensional. We need to get to a place where we can uncover the secrets. We can uncover the different layers, the different dimensions of God's love and incorporate that into our everyday lives. Then we will truly start to see us loving as God loves us. Right?